Hi, welcome to New America's Video Blog. I'm Jim Jockel, and welcome to a new series on the evolution of risk technology. And joining me today is Alan Whipple, founder of Quartet FS, and also founder of a system that many people uh, that are watching are very familiar <laughs> with, uh, Unfortunately. Uh, uh, Summit. So, uh, welcome, Alan. Thanks for coming on Thanks, today. Jim. Thank you. Um, why don't we just start very, very quickly with the elevator pitch around uh, Quartet FS? Might, sure. People might not be familiar, so uh, uh, why don't you just set the table of this discussion? Absolutely. So, Quartet, uh, Quartet FS is a a software company focused on uh, capital market in-memory analytical problems. So we effectively do a produce an in-memory OLAP engine, which is a multidimensional analysis component used to solve a whole tier series of continuous big data analytical problems, from risk management to credit monitoring to position keeping, et cetera. So I think you know one of the things in, in thinking about evolution of risk management technology and where we are today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of more technical terms are, are, are coming into our into our dialogue, like sure. all up engines and in memory <laughs> and cloud and right. big data. And uh, I think you know many of us just uh, kind of want to get back to trading. Um, but you know, one of the questions I really wanted to start with was: so, founder and original architect of Summit, and now Quartet FS with in memory data mm -hmm. processing, slice dice, etc. Uh, give a little bit of a, the history of how this world has changed specifically around OTC sure. for uh, technology. Sure, well if we go back to the 90s, technology was about, um, at least from Summit's perspective, we were producing monolithic enterprise systems. We had to do everything in one product. Having all asset classes, front to back capability, the ability to do more and more within a single offering. Um, the margins of the derivative products were high enough that it could support that kind of infrastructure. If we move forward to, say, the late 90s, we actually had a technology shift where loosely coupled technologies became much more prevalent. So the ability to glue together disparate infrastructures uh, it became easier, cheaper, and more practical. Go forward a little bit and we get into things like 2008, okay, and the, the big credit crunch. Um, and a, a, a transition from the kind of complex derivatives into more vanilla, uh, higher volume, and a, a much larger concentration on risk mitigation, as well as uh, cost containment. So the ability to see technology and the kind of business in parallel evolving from what could support these massive costly infrastructures into something that's much lighter weight, um, more uh, cheaper to run, uh, and much more easy to maintain and more flexible in how it can adapt to uh, changes in the technology needs and the business needs as we go forward. So in terms of, of risk management today, mm -hmm. we can talk about the changing rules okay. and environments sure. and, and whatnot, but in your experience with CTOs, um, what's, the, what's the top five checklist that they're thinking about, especially as it relates to their, their end user clients uh, internally? Okay, well we have a lot of regulatory pressure um, that we're seeing. We have a lot of adaptability. So the ability to be agile, to basically manipulate your technical environment and react quickly to uh, changing in uh, infrastructures and changing in requirements. Um, we have the ability to um, refine how, um, how uh, easy it is to adapt more complex sets of analytics, and I'll get into that in a, in a moment. Um, we certainly have this, um, this issue of being rationalizing the cost of ownership and uh, utilizing the fact that in-memory technologies, which we can talk about a little more, um, distributed architectures like a CAS kind of calculation environment, uh, is much more prevalent today and much, uh, much more cost effective to manage. So basically utilizing the fact that I have a, uh, a very wide dispersed set of both legacy and evolving sources of data, the ability to perform much more higher volume complex calculations um, on, a, on a continuous basis. And that continuous is actually important because we now have the technical means to do what used to take us hours to run on an overnight basis. We can now do on a continuous basis. Take legislation like Dodd-Frank, which is uh, fundamental to redefining how we can assess things like credit calculations. So a distributed architecture that has a compute farm that's able to instantaneously calculate a wide set of scenarios. And then an aggregation engine, which is what, what Active Pivot effectively is the ability to aggregate kind of complex sets of uh, disparate scenario results um, in a multi-dimensional way and analyze this in a sub-second kind of impact analysis, measuring marginal length calculations, pre-trade assessment in milliseconds as opposed to many, many minutes or hours as it used to take us. So these kinds of technologies are enabling, enabling the CTOs to kind of be much more reactive. Um, this suite of technology didn't even exist five years ago. 
So it's been the, the, the evolution of in-memory architectures, the fact that memory is cheap, addressable, that's opening up a new suite of problems that can be solved. It, uh, and you, you use the word cheap, right? So yeah. we always throw around memory is cheap, um, you know, <laughs> um, but how cheap is it? <laughs> okay, well, that's a very good question. I mean, the first point is that it's addressable. We can actually move problems into an in-memory representation that even five years ago was impossible. So imagine uh, being able to encapsulate the entire value at risk surface of a, um, of a large top, top tier bank into a single server, a commodity server, something that's you know, a $30,000, $40,000 machine. Um, this used to cost millions of dollars to try to even anticipate this years ago, where today we can make this fit into commodity hardware. Um, running a, an, an aggregation or a, uh, an in-memory representation of that that's instantaneously solving these kinds of questions. So the old days of running big queries against massive databases uh, is no longer a requirement. And the performance improvement is just orders of magnitude faster by capitalizing the fact that everything is represented on an in-memory representation. Hmm. And in terms of you know, so you can manage cost, right, while gaining agility. Um, final question for this, you know, in, in terms of central clearing and, mm -hmm. you know, introduction of swaps, uh, the CEPHs, excuse me, <laughs> um, you know, how much impact is, is this the driver right now, or? You know, is collateral the driver? Is, right. is, Where are you is seeing CCP it? is the driver? I mean, what we know is that a reaction to 2008, we had a series of changes in methodology. So the, the, um, the adoption of scenario-based methodologies, something like a, a value at risk you know, calculation or a, a CCP mar variation margin calculation that's based on 1,200 days of, of historical data, um, changes the way that we, we look at the problems, okay? Um, the ability to, you know, in, in what we're doing together, the ability to represent that in a, an aggregated in-memory representation and apply marginal analytics on top of that in milliseconds uh, when you're talking about data set problems that can be into the five to 10 terabytes of data, uh, it used to take hours just to move the data around, let alone to perform the analytics. So now that we can move the analytics calculation engines and the incremental um, in-memory processing engines onto the same infrastructure, we effectively can now solve on a pre-trade basis um, what used to take us hours to run. So the, the, the regulations and the CCP methodology was mandated by the, the, you know, the credit crunch and the regulatory changes that, that led us to it. But the technical solution is to kind of uh, apply a, a, an incremental analytical environment that allows us to embed that into, say, a pre-trade execution process to be able to price into a trade. Uh, and that's where a combination of a distributed calculation farm and an in-memory aggregation infrastructure is a perfect synergy. Alan, I want to thank you so much hey, for your time today. Um, the Quartet website is? <laughs> QuartetFS.com. Uh, QuartetFS.com. Excellent. And if anybody has questions for you, can they connect on LinkedIn? or uh... Uh, LinkedIn <laughs> is fine. Um, and uh, our website has a wealth of information, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to work together. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining Thank us today. Much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, again, please, uh, let's talk about it. Keep this conversation going in dialogue. Join us at, at NX Analytics on Twitter. Follow our blog. Comment, feedback. We're going to dive more into the topics of the evolution of risk management technology as we're bringing front and middle office and back office operations together in a single platform and solving those real-time challenges. Thank you, Alan, and we'll see you next time.